All right, today is May 29th, two days before Memorial Day. And it's time to do some things that I was gonna do. Um, with the COVID recently, we've just pretty much lived our lives in this house. Bought things and threw it into the garage. Well, I'm sorry. The garage is supposed to be the man cave. So what I'm doing today, and check out the thing, look at this. Not a cloud in the sky anywhere. It's about 62 degrees, but look at this. Just beautiful. Recently, my wife was at a store and someone opened up their door, decided to put this lovely little dent in the car. We're gonna get that PDR. PDR stands for Paintless Dent Repair, but this is the chore of the weekend. The garage. Ah, I am OCD. And what that means to you is that I like to have things clean and organized. So the goal today is to take everything out of the garage with the exception of the Swift, but I'm gonna give that a wash. Uh, I have a friend in Toronto, Canada named Al, who has offered to buy my car for me, but it's not for sale. I bought this car when it was brand new. It only had seven miles on it. There were only two left in the inventory. One had air conditioning and was in white, and then this one that you see in front of you. Um, the one that had air conditioning was like a thousand dollars more so I cheaped out at that time and uh, Took this one the real story is I wanted the one with AC because I liked AC and The owner of the dealership said yeah, I'll adjust the price to make it so that you can get it The very next day I came in the son said yeah, we can't you know adjust the price down that much your options are to take this white one or pay the extra thousand dollars. I'm like, where your dad? He said he's going to do this. Where dad no longer runs the business, I do. Okay. So I took this one. So the goal right now, and I'm going to go ahead and pause this, or possibly make another video, is to pull everything that you see here out of the garage. Um, Got to clean up the grill in the back there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, Get all of this stuff out. Uh, if you leave it to a woman, no offense to women, but the garage is like storage. And for a man, the garage is your man cave. So I definitely want to <laughs> not let this woman take over my space. So I'm going to clean this out uh, starting now. All right, you see this area now? Watch what it looks like in about half an hour or so. Um, what is the other thing I wanted to say? Um, I basically just pulled the cars forward. Uh, we have a friend over, a family member. So they're in the house talking. So I am going to start pulling things out of the garage one by one until I have that garage completely empty with the exception of the Swift. Okay, YouTube family, um, I've been cleaning the garage for about roughly an hour, taking everything that's in the garage out. As you can see, all I have left is that pile there, but you can also see all the stuff that I've taken out of the garage that I have to put back in here in some kind of organized way that we can still park the wife's car in here, and there will never be anything set on the car, like a box or anything like that. It's not going to happen. Um, but for my friend Al in Canada, Toronto, um, yep, I have a new battery. Well, not a new battery, I found a battery. I'm gonna clean it up, make sure it's got proper fluids and charge it up and uh, put it in the car. And maybe Monday, actual Memorial Day, I will try to start the car. Um, you can see the front damage of the car. I'll do another video explaining the history of the car and why I've kept it from 1994 to 2021. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of stuff in this garage. Let me, I don't know if the video angle is doing it justice. So I'll go upstairs and come from the balcony and let you look down on it. All right, here we are on the balcony, looking down on everything that was in the garage. And I have everything organized, the uh, yard utilities, 
lawnmower, snowblower, tiller, grass spreader, weed whacker, then the grandkids' bikes, uh, cheers for when we go to stadium, uh, events outside, stadium, uh, things of that nature. The four different types of coolers that we take for different events. Boxes of stuff that's from leftover from wedding and a couple other stuff. Christmas ornaments, the two white deers, the tire and the jack, everything over in that corner. That is uh, stuff for my cars. The second grill, which we have to clean. That thing's been in the garage for so long, it's got so much rust on it. Uh, and the wood, that's all scrap. I want to get that out of there. And now, I have to somehow organize all of this put it back in the garage and make room for my car, the wife's car. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. All right. So let's see here. This is everything that's in the garage and 90% of it has to go back into the garage. Uh, I have to figure something out. Uh, I don't know where I can put all this stuff. All right, what we're gonna do now is talk about the Swift. Okay, what you see in front of you is a 1994 Suzuki Swift GT. It is a 1.3 liter non-turbocharged engine that has roughly about 190 to 110 horsepower with like 90, pound feet of torque it gets 28 city 32 highway it is a five-speed manual uh, it's got Recaro seats front and back or mainly mainly front uh, AM FM cassette yeah cassette go figure powered mirrors no powered windows no powered locks uh, although I've put those things into the car it has power locks but I have to wire that up again what happened the front end here the accident in 1996 I had a problem with the car and I took it to the dealership and they told me it needed a new computer it wasn't covered on a warranty it'll be about three thousand dollars so I said I got a family five kids wife two dogs and all that other great stuff I don't have the money to waste on this car I'll just buy another car so I bought another car put this car in the backyard the reason why I did that because I still own old on the car I bought it brand new in 1994 with only seven miles and in 96 it was out of warranty had 64,000 miles because I dro drove it that much so I parked it in the backyard and still continued making the payments until the car was paid off I said once the car is paid off I'll save up the money and I'll get it back on the road so in 2006 um, kids were older, I was divorced, I had custody of the kids, I saved up the money, and I got the car running again. So I drove it for another two years, no, four years. How many years did I drive it? Four years. So I put on a total of, I think it's 132,000 miles on the car, and um, I was going by, I was going down a major street, and a friend of mine's had a business that he just opened, and I've been looking for him to say congratulations and things of that nature. So driving by his shop on this major road, I saw him and I looked over, hey, there he is. And that little, hey, there he is, I wasn't paying attention to the road, and I ran into the back of somebody. Uh, and as you can see, this is the damage. So it needs a hood, impact bar, uh, apron, fender, That's about it. Um, so I took the car to a friend's shop and he told me how much it would be. I said, I don't have that kind of money. I'll just do the same thing. I'll park the car, I'll save up and I'll fix it. But in the meanwhile, 2006, this car wasn't very popular. Uh, these cars are just junked um, because no one wants them. But there is a very strong sentimental value to this car uh, that I have to this car so I kept it 
I am now remarried. Kids are all grown up and moved out and giving me grandkids. Stop. 17 is enough. Um, and I want to get this thing back running. Given that more time has passed, my skills have doubled. I kind of want to go ahead and just kind of trick this thing all the way out. Uh, take it down do a full body off restoration. It's a unibody. Uh, just sandblast the entire car floor, fix and replace anything that I can find to replace it. Get it back on the road one last time. And uh, at that point, I'll be really ready to sell it or give it to one of my kids, whoever, whoever wants it. So here's the things I want to do with the car. Uh, obviously, fix the front, soup up the engine, take the engine from 90 horsepower up to, say, 300 horsepower, put a turbocharger on it, do a carbon fiber one-off hood with a nice design with some vents and louvers in it. Uh, change, keep the ground effects, just change it a little bit. Maybe add, add some, I don't know what they call it, but just change up the ground effects a little bit on the front and add some ground effects on the back. So if you look at the bottom half of the car and you follow that body line and then right by the right bumper, you see how far it goes up. I would like to be able to continue that straight, that, that, that datum plane and go straight back and add something to the bottom half of that rear bumper. My car and the wife's car has panoramic sunroofs. Well, I have a sunroof, she has a panoramic sunroof. I would like to put a panoramic sunroof in the car. Uh, something custom made and built for the car. Uh, take my shots at that. Uh, the five-speed transmission, how I've seen on the internet was people have taken Mitsubishi Eclipse six-speed transmissions and with an adapter plate bolted it up, bolted to the engine block of the Swift engine. So I'm like, hmm, something to look into because it would be nice to have an extra gear uh, in this thing. Tint the windows, repaint the whole car the same color. The graphics on the side, the Swift GT, the 16 valve. In 1992, they had a kind of a swoosh uh, design that went up to the Swift GT. I would like to put that instead of this one and have it painted in instead of a vinyl sticker. Uh, interior. I would like to convert it from cloth to leather. Take the cloth seats and make that leather. Keep the seats the way they are because like once again, they're factory Recaro seats. So they're really comfortable and everything. Change out the steering wheel. Put in a sound system front and rear for sound quality. I do want to have two tennis subs. If you look at that piece of paper that's in the passenger seat, that's actually the design of my system. Hold on a second. Hmm, I accidentally hit stop. Oh well. But here is the stereo system where there would be a six and a half inch center channel, uh, two inch tweeters in the pillars, uh, three inch in the six and a half in the doors, a touchscreen uh, control, an artisan bit 10. And in the back side panels, in the back seat, there would be a three inch mid range and an eight inch sub buried in the quarter panels. And in the trunk, there would be a custom made fiberglass box for two chin inch subs and house three amps. One amp dedicated to the front speakers, one amp dedicated to the rear speakers, and one amp dedicated to the subs. Um, take a close look, I don't know if that's gonna show. I'll just zoom in a little bit. So, line through 115, if you can read that, I'll hold it there for a couple of minutes where you can see what the idea was. And then I'll slowly pan down. the rest of the list but that's what I want to do to the Swift now I've had several people ask to buy the car as is and the prices that they're offering is just ridiculously laughable one I don't want to sell it so when you come up to me goes yeah based on the condition I know what the condition is I know it needs to have the front end fix I know it's got little dings and dents from the kids putting their bikes on here um, back 
when my kids were kids and the car was parked in the yard, they climbed on the top. And you can see that it's a, it's got some dings and dents from when the kids jumped on the car. Needless to say, I screamed at them and grounded them. Wink. Um, so, but for the most part, for a car that's over, what is it now? 94, 2001? Jesus Christ. Almost 30, 40 years old? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, haven't, I can't do the math that quickly. 26 years old. 26 years old car. It's in pretty nice shape. Um, I'm going to make another video once I've finished cleaning this up. I'm going to wash the car, uh, put on a coat of wax, which I normally do, and armor all the tires and come back with that video. I'm going to take all these videos and stitch them together and uh, put this on YouTube so fellow Suzuki Swift fans can see this. Here's something, here's a side note. Check this out. You remember overhauling where, you know, they, someone would write into overhaul and they go out and get the car and then, you know, fix it to exactly what he wanted. I told my kids, man, it would be the greatest thing in the world if you guys were to write that TV show and uh, try to get my Swift into the overhauling family. And I still want to be in the overhauling family because I, I, I think it's back on TV um, on one of the plus stations like uh, uh, HDD TV Plus or something. I know it's not that channel, but I just just an example what what kind of network it's on. Um, if someone have has contact to the over overhauling uh, production crew or whoever's involved in making that decision, I still want my 1994 Swift to be overhauled by Chip Flues in the A team. Um, once it's in their hands, whatever they want to do to it, they can do to it. But I would really like to be part of the overhauling family. I really would like to get this car done. I really would like to be part of some of the repairs on the car. Um, just so I can, you know, see how these guys think and how they do things. But it's wishful thinking. But anyway, I'm going to end this video. And like I said, I'll make a, uh, one more video. And I'll stitch them all together. So I can put on a shorter version of all of this and uh, put it on YouTube. All right, thanks, bye. Okay, why is somebody like me, 5'9", 270 pounds, likes this car? Back in the late 80s, 88, 89, I was in college and I was working part-time at Domino Pizza in Mequon, Wisconsin. Look it up, pretty, uh, rich neighborhood. There was a kid from that neighborhood by the name of Bobby North. Bobby worked at a place called Soundstage where they did car stereos and they put in big subwoofers and amplifiers and things, EQs and things of that nature. I got the job through a friend named Donnie Jefferson. Donnie had a 1979 Volkswagen Rabbit and he had put a system in that, and I, I enjoy what that car sounded like. Uh, that's when bass and big amplifiers and things of that nature were were really starting out. And I was always impressed by Donnie's system. While working at Domino's, and the first time I met Bobby, Bobby had a white 1989 Chevy Spectrum, or was it a Chevy Spirit? It was a three-door hatchback. And it was white, it had fog lights, and it had two tinted subwoofers, and it had a Hyphonic Zeus amplifier. And that thing just boomed, it hummed. That's the first time I heard bass with that kind of aggression, clarity, and uh, uh, force. It was just, it was just unbelievable. When he pulled up to the Domino's to pick up an order, the windows would shake, literally shake violently from the base from his car. And then he opened up the door and I was like, oh my dear God, what do you have in that little thing? So Bobby North is the reason why I have my 1994 Suzuki Swift. So in uh, 89, I bought my first Swift and Bobby saw the car. And this is the first time I ever heard someone say this. Bobby North said, man, your car is tits. And I just thought that was so funny. Uh, I've you know, never heard a human being talk like that. Um, 
And I said, one day, Bobby, I'm going to do my Swift like you did your your, your uh, Chevy here. And he's like, yeah, dude, you know, do this, do that. And let me know. And I'll help you. Um, fast forward, I lost the Swift, the first one, the 89. Then uh, five years later, I bought this one. And I said, you know what? And I'm not going to stop until I do what I want to do with this car. So Bobby North is the reason why I have this car. Those are not gunshots. <laughs> it's my wife in the house cooking. She's making cupcakes and she's slapping it on the table to get the batter to even out. <laughs> so Bobby North is the reason why I bought that Swift. I wanted to make uh, bought my, my Swift. And once I bought it, um, the fastest I've ever been in this car is uh, 130 plus. Uh, when I first got the car, the odometer goes up to 130. Uh, I had uh, Donnie and uh, my ex-wife's sister boyfriend in the car and we were coming back from Chicago and he says man open this little thing up let's see what he can do and we buried the needle down in the MPH let me show you uh, you can't really see with that light but it says 120 and then it's got that little mark at the bottom which is 130 I had that orange needle buried down in between the MPH that's how fast we were going so needless to say, I developed my love for small impact cars uh, based on two friends having a Volkswagen Rabbit and a Chevy Spirit or Chevy Sprint or Chevy Spectrum. I don't know. Just look it up. 1988 Chevy three-door hatchback, uh, white, turbocharged. All right. That's the story for why I bought my Suzuki Swift. Subscribe and I'll talk to you later. All right. As you see, I just got finished cleaning out the garage. Everything's nice and clean. I got to organize the stuff and put it back in here. Nothing ever goes on top of the Swift. But you know something? I make videos about how much I like this car. Love this car. Not like. I'm going to do something. Uh, right now, she's extremely dirty. Let me see if can you see that yeah you can kind of see some of it there I'm going to go ahead and wash it Okay, we have it washed. Now let's squeegee it. Oh, Al, Canada. I got a battery. I'm gonna take that battery and get it tested and make sure it's still a good battery. Then we're gonna throw it in and hopefully start this car. All right. So just looking at the front, it needs a hood, two headlights, maybe just one, but I wanna go ahead and get two. Uh, fender, front bumper, upper and lower, grill, upper and lower, fog lights, which I have, um, impact bar, uh, there is a a shield that's behind that impact bar that needs to be replaced, might just leave it out because I would put a bigger radiator so I would need the extra airflow to keep it cool. Um, the headlight pocket, where the headlight mounts to, and the roof needs to be fix from when the kids were younger like three or four and they climbed up on top of the car and uh, put some dents in it 
So that's got to be fixed. All right, I'm going to squeegee it down, put on a coat of wax, and finish the video. Okay. She's all squeegeed off. I'm going to take some towels, dry it down, and put on a coat of wax. All right. She's all dried off. I uh, still have to hit the tires. But once I'm done drying off the tires, yeah, I'm going to throw on a coat of wax. Okay. Formula One Carnubian Car Wax. Let's, let's go. Look at these two hands. This is probably no good anymore. Sat in the trunk of the on my other car, so let's just do a test area. Oh yeah, nothing like tin canning. All right. Okay, I got the wax on. I've let it sit for about 15 minutes, and now I'm gonna clean it off. All right, I am done washing the Swift. I washed it, dried it, put on a coat of wax, wiped that off and washed it one more time. And you can see that's what she looks like. Um, to get a little closer view, nice and clean. Not bad for a car that's 26 years old. And you can see the reflection of the light above. Nice and clean, armor all the tires. I do have a battery for it. Um, I have to take that battery and get it checked out and make sure that it is uh, can hold the charge or if it's any good. Um, if so, then what I will do is put it on a trickle charger overnight. And after the party tomorrow, on Mori Memorial Day, Monday, um, I will put the battery in, throw about a gallon of gas in the car, and see if I can get the car to start up. But let me show you the inside of the engine. Okay. Wow. The engine mount, I forgot I took the engine mount off because um, I was going to repair it and I took it to a shop and they took the engine mount off and said they were going to fix it. And uh, it was a friend. I worked for him for a while, but we didn't fix it. So, yeah, uh, the engine mount is there somewhere. But the valve cover is typically blue. When I went to get this car fixed, he told me I need a new engine. I bought a new engine. He kept the old engine, got it running. Turned out to be a harmonic balance key. It was with the whole problem of the car. Um, yeah, I would like to pull this engine and transmission and all the wiring harnesses out. Uh, media blast this entire inside. Replace what needs to be replaced. Caulk what needs to be recalked. Um, and try to get this thing back on the road. Um, you can see the damage. Some people will say, well, why waste the time and the money? <laughs> Sorry, baby. Because um, I love the car. Um, I said early in one of my videos, probably this one, why I like the car so much. Um, oh, yeah. So this is important. As I was cleaning out the car, wiping the windows inside and out, I came across a wish list. Check this out. All right. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, this is my son, James. Uh, he's going to tell the reason why he likes this car. Say something. The reason why I like this car, probably the first car I've been in, age five, introduced me to the street racing scene. Probably got a lot of creative ideas out of this car. Yeah, got me in a drawing. Got me in a play me for speed. It's not more of a car, it's more of a family area. Yeah, just can't let me go, buddy. So are you waiting for me to be tired of it and give it to you? Yeah, I've been waiting since 18. Yeah, since, since 13. Since 13. How old are you now? 27. And you still want this car after I'm done with it? Yeah. So this car's been in the family for uh, a minimum of 26 years. And James, you are 27. 27. So this car has perhaps been in his life, been in his life the entire you know, time since the day he was born. Um, so it's really hard for me to sell this car to anybody uh, for any dollar amount. That's why when I'm done with it, 
or I get tired to a point where I can't afford to keep up with it or find parts. And he's in a position that he's ready to go and uh, spend the time and money to fix this car. This car is going to my son that you just saw. You said you asked the questions? What's your favorite memory in the Swift? My favorite memory in the Swift is when I first got it, uh, I went to Chicago with a friend from work, and we were racing the Camaro, and the guy had a V8 Camaro, and he was flying, and we caught up to him. Um, my odometer needle goes up to 130. We were going so fast that the needle was in between the MPH. Right. And everybody that was in the car was like, are you serious? Are we going that fast? Right. And we passed the Camaro and he was like, what the hell is that? And at the next, uh, uh, we get off the highway because we saw a cop. And at the next gas station, he's like, what's in this little thing? And that, that's my greatest memory. It's, it's racing the Camaro, catching him and passing him up.